Hello, this video focuses on examination of the elbow, particularly regards golfer's elbow, tennis elbow and osteoarthritis. The assessment of the elbow starts with a history, in particular of any neurological symptoms, any injuries such as dislocation, fractures, and any injuries in childhood and growth abnormalities. The patient also needs to be asked specifically about crepitus and clunking around the elbow <coughs> and any difficulties they're having with work, sleep or other activities. Visual inspection starts with looking at the muscle mass of the biceps, the triceps and the forearm muscles, any provinces around the elbow, any scars, etc. An appreciation of the landmarks as well. So the most obvious prominence on the lateral side is the lateral epicondyle, the olecranon process, and these form a triangle with the radial head. If one needs to inject the elbow joint, <coughs> then there's a soft spot in the centre of that, which is overlying the radio capitella joint. On the anterior aspects of the elbow, we have the antecubital fossa with the biceps tendon coming down here, and this area uh, may be a source of pain for bicipital tendonitis. Medially, the ulnar nerve passes behind the medial epicondyle. And obviously there's the medial epicondyle here with the common flexor origin where golfer's elbow pain may be felt. Or on the lateral side, one of the several causes of lateral elbow pain, including tennis elbow or lateral elbow arthritis. Some patients with a history of injury to the elbow, particularly of dislocation, have chronic discomfort and perhaps clicking afterwards. This may be a sign of instability. One of the easiest examinations for this is to ask the patient to lift themselves out of the chair uh, with their hands. So if we ask our subject to put her hands on the arms of the chair and push up, if this reproduces the discomfort or clicking or crepitus, then this may be a sign of elbow instability and would suggest further examination is required, but this is outside of the scope of this video. When we come to examine elbow range of motion, inflection and extension, I usually find it easiest to ask the subject to put their elbows into extension with the shoulders in abduction like this. In females in particular, there's usually an element of hyperextension. And then if we could ask them to actively flex both sides, it should be symmetrical and the patient should easily be able to touch the shoulders on both sides. We put the arms down. Similarly, rotation of the forearm, which occurs both at the distal radio on the joint and the proximal radio on the joint, which is part of the elbow, can be done in this position with the elbow AB, uh, sorry, AD ducted and flex 90 degrees. We can then clearly see forearm rotation, and that can be further ascertained by asking the patient to stick the thumb out to the side and comparing it to the other side as well and ask them to actively turn the thumb in and turn the thumb out. There's roughly 180, 160 to 180 degrees as usual. Further examination of the elbow after range of motion would obviously be guided by the patient's history. If they're complaining of lateral elbow pain, there are several causes of this, the classic one being tennis elbow and palpation of the origin of the extensor mass uh, at the epicondyle and just distal to that uh, often reproduces some discomfort. A special test of this would be Cousins test, which is resisted active extension, usually of the ring finger, reproduces discomfort in the area in question of the common extensor origin. On the medial side, golfer's elbow is a tendinopathy of the origin of the common flexor muscles and often that's tender palpated here and also is painful on resisted flexion of the wrist. So put your hand up towards you, hard as you can, towards you and resist. Good. That often reproduces pain. Furthermore, the ulnar nerve rests in the groove just behind the medial epicondyle. This may be irritable 
if the patient has symptoms of paresthesias into the little and ring fingers and in a proportion of the population the nerve subluxes there and can be palpated by gently placing the fingers over the mesial epicondyle and passively flexing the elbow when the nerve can be felt to slip out of its groove and over the mesial epicondyle. This makes it much more prone to compression, entrapment and may require treatment. Biceps tendinopathy uh, can also occur and again resisted flexion of the elbow in supination of the wrist with palpation there may reproduce symptoms. Occasionally triceps tendinitis can occur and similarly resisted extension of the elbow the palpation of there can again cause uh, discomfort and reproduce the symptoms. Finally in elbow osteoarthritis it's frequent to have uh, impinging osteophytes on the coronoid process and in the coronoid fossa and similarly on the olecranon process and in the olecranon fossa and the patient's symptoms may be reproduced by forced extension which causes impingement of the posterior osteophytes or forced flexion which reproduces impingement of the anterior osteophytes. Furthermore on palpation of the radial head which is the third point of a triangle between the olecranon the lateral epicondyle, with the radial head being just here. It can be felt to rotate under the, under the examining thumb. And pressure over this with rotation may reproduce discomfort, and certainly crepitus may be felt there in radiocapitella arthritis.